All right, welcome in. Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com. I'm at the Hard Rock Hotel uh, Casino in Las Vegas, about to head to the airport and head back to the Sunshine State. Uh, fun weekend. Gators win. Not so great picks wise. I'd gone five and one in the NFL the past two Sundays. I went one, two, and one yesterday. And. Uh, I actually personally got on the cow, cowgirls last night, so, <clears throat> but I didn't have it in my pick pack on uh, my website or Vegas Insider. Um, anyhow, all right, the big news coming out of this weekend, obviously, Tua Tagovailoa, Tonga Viola um, goes down with the ankle. He had that, um, what do they call it, the zipper uh, ankle surgery yesterday morning. He told his teammates he will be back for LSU, whether he'll be 100% or not certainly remains to be seen. I was not very impressed with Mac Jones. Tua throwing that pick in the end zone and then getting hurt really hurt me. I had uh, the over in that game and it was on pace, but it did not come through, obviously. So, if nobody else is going to say it, I'll go ahead and say it. LSU will beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa and I'm not going out of limb on this one. I've been saying this one for a while, but uh, I'll add to it. I'll, 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 I'll raise it. Florida is going to absolutely smash Georgia. Smash them. Crush them. I, I, first off, I think we beat them whether Greenard or Zuniga are back. If Gre Greenard and Zuniga are back, <laughs> watch out. Um, sloppy, but... I mean, Florida had played Auburn and had played at LSU, going at South Carolina. You know their crowd's going to be into it with all the momentum they had from the Georgia game. They, they're winning most of the game. They're winning to start the fourth quarter. And Florida did get some generous no calls. Wow. I was screaming at Tyree Cleveland to quit holding. He held that man for 40 yards. I've seen people get away with holding for maybe 10 yards, maybe 15. First time ever I've seen a guy get away with holding for 40 yards. And uh, didn't we have a false start on that play that didn't get called as well? And then the the pick play on the offensive PI that did not get called. It was typical Will Muschamp buzzard luck, man. The guy could not get a flipping break. Uh, it's crazy, but I'm a Gator, so we'll take it. We will take it. But um, look, I moved LSU up ahead of Alabama in my power rankings because we really, we don't, the man went under the knife yesterday. We have no idea if two is going to be 100% the rest of the year. We know he had that surgery last year uh, after the SEC championship game. He didn't necessarily look unhealthy against Clemson, but he didn't play the way he had played all year. Um, LSU is going to beat Alabama November 9th. So, you know, Alabama's all good without him till then. They've, all they've got is Arkansas at home. Although I think they're a little overpriced, and I think Arkansas is absolute garbage. But um, last night, and I've been kind of in a rush to do some things this morning. I haven't looked at necessarily the updated lines, but I saw 33 last night. I made it, um, I believe I made it 20, uh, I made it 26 and a half. Um, that offense did not look very good with Mac Jones. What's up with Jeremy Pruitt? His quarterback gets concussions in back-to-back -back weeks, okay? First off, anybody that gets a concussion probably shouldn't play a week later. Second off, if he gets concussed very early in that, that second game, for Pruitt, oh my God, they're vacuuming me. They hear the hard rock. Oh no, they're not vacuuming me. That machine's going the other way, so sorry for that bother. Um, where was I? Where the hell was I? Long weekend in Vegas. What the hell was I just talking about? Oh, Mac. Oh, Pruitt. He played it off as if Brian's day to day, like he's going to play against South Carolina next week and risk a third concussion in three weeks. With all the things we've found out in the last decade, Jeremy Pruitt is such a dumbass. He is a moron. Anyway, um, Eastern Michigan, twenty-two four and one against the spread in their last. What's that? Twenty-seven underdog spots 
the Eagles, Chris Creighton, and my guy, the quarterback, Mike Glass, didn't play. I don't know if he got hurt in warm-ups. I watched most of the game on ESPN Plus on my computer here in the Hard Rock, which is a C CG technology book. Um, oh, Jalen Brown agreed to four years, 115 mil for the Celtics. Smart move, bro. Smart move. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I had all kind of stuff I wanted to get to real quick. I am in a hurry. I'm going to have to wrap this up in about five minutes. But, um, okay, Rondale Moore, doubtful against Illinois. Tyler Huntley, questionable with a calf injury against Cal this week. Uh, Utah, uh, or I'm sorry, Huntley, 9-1 to TDI&T ratio for the year. Three rushing touchdowns. Um, well, I, I got hurt badly by Washington and Arizona State uh, Saturday. I mean, I have a good day if, if those teams cover. All right, Arizona State, first off, they got a couple of turnovers giving them the ball in just great short fields. They got a field goal on one of them. They missed a 42-yard field goal on another. Um, and then they had a stop. Uh, you know what? They had, a, no, they had another turnover in Utah Territory. They had a missed field goal, only a field goal, and a turnover in Utah Territory. They might have even had two turnovers in Utah Territory. Anyway, um, but I'm still looking good. There's like five minutes left. Forgive me if it was five and a half, six. 14 to three. I'm at plus 14. So I'm up by three. Utah's punting. Arizona State muffs the punt. You know, they fumble on the punt. Uh, Utah recovers. Next play, Zach Moss, 39-yard touchdown run. And then the back door's wide open and ASU gets me nothing. Washington. I'm getting points. I'm getting two and a half with Washington. Obviously, I had some on the money line as well. They're up 28-14 late third, and Cristobal goes for it at his own 34, which I'm all good. I Ballsy call by – I'm not going to call it very ballsy. It was ballsy. Not very ballsy. More coach. When you're down 14 in the second half, error on the side of being effing aggressive. I mean, please. So, Cristobal – and it wasn't fourth and inches. It was fourth and a long one, maybe even a fourth and a short two. Whatever the case um, – he got it, and they go on, and they rally, and they win that game 35-31. to 31. If Washington holds on and Arizona State, just give me something, man. Some – golly. Don't fumble. Make one of the field goals. Anything, man. But uh, that did not happen. I did personally get some Eastern Michigan money line. Uh, was plus 280. Uh, but not a good weekend. Fun weekend. Not a good weekend gambling-wise, unfortunately. But we move on. The rearview mirror. It's in the rearview mirror. And we look to this. I will tell you, I did not have as nearly bad a weekend as this D-bag who, at, at another, I don't know, maybe here at the Hard Rock or another CG technology uh, uh, property, this dude bet 130 large money line on Buffalo at home against Miami to win 20. First off, what a chalk eater. Don't, I mean, what, I don't even know what the, oh, it was, it was minus 6,500, loser. 130 large, smell ya. That's a chalk sandwich that did not taste good. Okay, other injuries, we got two, uh, we got Rondale Border looking doubtful. We got Tyler Huntley, questionable. My guy, Mike Glass, for Eastern Michigan is questionable, but man, the, the backup looked good. He, he played well the whole game. Um, oh, and there was another guy in uh, ESPN Chalks, Ben Fox, tweeted this. Another guy at a points, points bet, um, that points bet, had a $150 10-team parlay. He hits the first nine. The last one left was the Chargers money line, plus 130. And Melvin Gordon fumbles on second and goal at the one with like 30-ish seconds left. Wow. And I doubt he had any time to do any hedging because he had a lot of four o'clock games going. So, wow, what a heartbreaker. It was, oh, and by the way, so it was a $150 10-team parlay that would have paid 58 large, ouch. Um, Boise State goes down for the first time. Baylor, look at Baylor. Okay, so I upgraded them to number 
14 this week from number 20. Um, not much change. I, I did put LSU number one. Not much change. I, I elevated Auburn three spots. I know it's Arkansas, but it was blowout city, and Georgia just looked horrible. It was scoreless. Like mid, mid to late third quarter of that game, gross. Um, big win for Oregon. Big win for Utah. Oh, Wisconsin. What? What? Good for Lovey. Lose the beard, though, bro. Lose the beard, Lovey. It, it's just getting a little too gray. Um, oh, and big win for my man, Derek Mason. And I love his speech. I love his speech afterward. How do you not love Derek Mason? Now, how the hell he got beat by UNLV at home by double digits, but then beats a Missouri team that I believe their NCAA appeal is still going to be ruled on, and they might be able to go to the SEC's champion or the SEC championship game. But now they lose one. But they're, they they get two weeks to prepare for Georgia. And Georgia does not look good. But obviously Missouri looked horrible losing to Vandy. And you know, Keyshawn Vaughn had a big game, but Kalija Lipscomb is a little banged up right now. But yeah, Boise State loses against BYU playing with a third string quarterback. Yikes! Yikes! I dropped them out of my top 25. Um, they were a pretender to begin with, and uh, I gotta wrap this up. Oh, it's getting ugly for Willie T. It's getting ugly, and I'm starting to hear a lot. In fact, I had heard some stuff that. Uh, oh, and by the way, Wake had, although Sam Hartman's one of the better backup QBs in the country, but, uh, you know, um, Jamie Newman was out for Wake. Uh, let's see. I'm just seeing if I see any uh, quick hitters that I want. Oh, by the way, the Illinois, that was the biggest upset of the year point spread-wise, and they were 25-1 to 1 money line at William Hill at five dimes and SBG Global offshore. They were 50-1, to 1, 50 to one. I'm not betting for first quarters anymore. I lose another heartbreaker with LSU on that uh, one this week. Uh, I'm not doing those anymore. Uh, and that's, oh, and what about, oh, I'm not doing UFC here, but yeah, Greg Hardy using the inhaler Friday night. Come on, dude. And man, I think it's time for Chris Weidman to retire. Um, the dude, he, is, he just doesn't have it anymore. He slowed down a lot and super happy for my man Joe Lozon, and he definitely needs to retire. Dana said he's going to make him. Sorry to go off on a UFC tangent all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, let's let me head to the airport. Uh, Monday night tonight. Um, now nah, I'm a little scared of the Patriots tonight, although I'm definitely not taking the Jets. All right, I got to head to McCarran and get back to Florida. Uh, I have another video later in the week. I uh, hope you did well on your bets and ball games. Brian Edwards, Major Wager, over now.